Remember, two person lift, save your back. I am super excited to be opening this Samsung 8K 65 inch television, this Sonos Arc soundbar, and the Sonos Sub Gen 3, which is really, really heavy. But I cannot wait because this is definitely going to make our living room the best audio visual experience I've ever experienced at home. I can say that for sure, even without getting this unboxed and set up, but let's jump into it. First, I wanna unbox the Samsung TV, and then second, we'll do the Sonos Arc, and then third, we'll do the Sub Gen 3. Let's get into this one. Before I do something that you should definitely not try yourself, which is lift this television by myself up onto here and then try to figure out how I can attach to the stand. Don't do that, by the way. Can you see at the bottom of the TV, it's still in the bottom of the box that it came in and I'm not holding it. As long as you're very careful not to bump the television, it's not gonna fall over, which is really, really handy. Let me try this without throwing my back out as well. Okay, well, that's the box out of the way good because it means I can get a better look at the back of the television. Have a look at that stand. Let's check this out. In fact, I'll probably lay this down. We have four more of these very, very small screws. You can see four spots for screws to go here. But I'm not seeing four corresponding locations here. That's definitely not a one person job. Well, hang on a second. I found it, yes! They actually fit, oh my god. Pretty obvious. Okay, wanna come a bit closer, check this out. It's these four. And this little screw does actually fit very nicely into that. Phillips head, screwdriver, little Phillips head screw. That's the one. Now, can we get this base attached? And screw these screws. I'm gonna hold the television with one hand. It's so precious, I don't want to break. Buy a Samsung 8K TV, they said. It'll be great, they said. As much as I'm struggling with this right now, honestly, I know there's that satisfied feeling that I'm gonna have tonight. And this is all set up and plugged in and working nicely. And it is nice to know where every screw goes and where everything fits together. The suffering is worth it. But this on the back of the television, then, this back into this one. All right, we're back in business. This bit is gonna go right about this way, right? Like this, like that. I'm fairly sure this is the right way to put it on. This way it should look, and now we're gonna attach the rest of the base like this. This is gonna be a challenge. It says this base is good for base, stand, whatever you want to call it. it. says it's good for a 55 inch or a 65 inch television. This is a 65. I promise this is a lot more fun than it looks. Okay, with this piece of the mount attached to the back of the television, now the idea is to attach this one like, like so. But I'm not gonna be able to do it here. I'm gonna need to move the television back onto the couch so I can get those screws. Finally got the stand on. It's really, really not easy. And you really, really want to get some help to get the, the last bit of the stand put together. As you can see, I actually had to use a few cushions because you need to slide the bottom of the stand under the television to actually get those screws in. It's not easy at all. But let me just rotate the television for you so you can see what it looks like side on. Remember, two person lift. Save your back. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but I can tell you, the stand is heavy by itself. Yes! Finally. Wow. 
Even without turning it on, then without getting the fingerprints off the screen and carrying it around, that just looks beautiful. You can see at the back of the television, this is the input area, and there's really nothing else back here. It's very, very clean, very slim lined. It just looks very elegant overall. And then all we need to do is connect the one connected box to the television. And there are a couple of different options for doing that, but it's pretty simple. There's not going to be a lot of wires and cables running everywhere, which is really nice. Lovely. Oh, what, a, what a nice looking remote control. Very short cable to connect the One Connect box to the television. And that's because it's intended that the One Connect box will be mounted and positioned exactly where it needs to plug into the television. If you don't want to do that, you can put your One Connect box somewhere else and use a longer cable. But this works for me. Smartphone or remote control? With the remote control in my hand, let's do that. Installing the latest updates. Looks like it's gonna take about half an hour. Now the software has finished updating. We did get an intermittent message that the antenna is not connected. We're not gonna bother with watching local television for now, but if we do wanna connect the antenna in the future, you need to make sure you're using this antenna adapter to protect the television. And if you want to mount your One Connect box somewhere other than immediately behind the television, there is a longer cable included for you. As you can see, we are ready to go. This is exactly as it appears. I haven't done anything yet. We've got Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, YouTube, Apple TV, all already built in. It's just a matter of signing into these streaming services and getting going, so let's give it a try. I do like on the remote, the tactile and intuitive volume up and down. Just setting up Bixby, the Samsung television voice assistant, and it's really easy. It walks you through the process. Best scenes from Top Gun 2 in 4K on an 8K television. The picture quality is pretty awesome. Now I'm gonna add the Sonos Arc soundbar to this Samsung television to really elevate that audio experience. It's pretty heavy. Very sleek. Let me show you the back. Very simple. Looks and feels really, really nice. Gotta say, the whole unboxing experience is really minimalist, and it reminds me of an Apple unboxing experience where there's no junk in the box that you don't need. It's just a really elegant, beautiful product that people love. Step one, connect the audio and power cables. Step two, download the Sonos app. Sounds pretty easy. Let's do it. Okay, we are in HDMI port three. Should be good, let's see. 
still have the Sonos arc flashing green light. No complaints from the TV. Now I'm going to open the Sonos app on my phone and get this guy started. Sorry, we lost the footage the first time, so we had to re-record the end of this video, but we'll keep going. The Sonos app is really intuitive and easy to use. Once you've downloaded it, you can log in and it really easily guides you on how to detect and connect your Sonos products. Each time you add a new Sonos product in the app, it will guide you on how to connect the product and it will also prompt you to go through the TruePlay sound setup just to make sure that the sound coming out of your Sonos Arc or your Subgen 3 or the system altogether is appropriate for your unique room. The app is really, really simple. Up here on settings, you can see I have a living room which has an Arc and a Sub already connected. But if you wanna add more Sonos products to different rooms in your home, it's very easy to do right here in the Sonos app. As you can see, the Subgen 3 is already set up and connected to the Arc and the television, but Setting it up was really intuitive and easy. It was the same process as setting up the Arc soundbar. Basically, you plug it in and then in the Sonos app, it will detect it. And then once it has found the Subgen 3, it allows you to add it to the living room space. And it will also prompt you to do the TruePlay sound checking again one more time. Once you have added the sub to the rest of the system. That's really cool. Come and have a look. As you can see, there's only one cord into the sub and it's very elegant, very stylish, also very heavy as well. So be careful when you're carrying it around and you might need help from a second person. Finished product time. We've already tested the television by itself. We've added the Arc soundbar and now we've also added the Sonos Sub Gen 3. The system is all complete, all together. And to be honest, as of the time of shooting, I've been living with this setup for over a month and I can tell you it is incredible, but let me just demonstrate right now. gives me goosebumps just watching it and listening to it. It is so cool, so, so cool. I'll just turn the volume down here so you can hear me speaking. It's great. If you can afford it, just treat yourself. You know you want it, just go ahead and get it. Now, if you're not sure it's pretty expensive, then maybe it's not for you. What I will say, if you're not convinced you need this entire system, if you are thinking about maybe you can live without something, I would say maybe you can live without the sub gen 3 to be honest with you it's fantastic but it's pretty expensive as well so if cost is a deciding factor for you and you think oh, i'm not really sure maybe you just want the arc soundbar to be perfectly honest with you because after living with the system for more than a month i can tell you that we're probably not getting great value out of the sub because we just don't play things that are that loud or have that much bass in them regularly to get super value out of that i think you want to be playing things that are pretty significant volume so you can actually see what it can really really do so that's my advice again the system is great i don't regret it for even a second if you're thinking about it treat yourself go ahead and get it and if you are thinking about getting it or any of these products i'll leave links to everything in the description down below so you can check those out otherwise have a great day and you might want to check out this video next